I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Become a channel member today to get access to some really cool perks. The link is in the video description. I'll make this as quick as I can, as I have two stories to tell. First one happened about three years after getting out of the Navy, about 1973. I was hunting the Atchafalaya Basin, south-central Louisiana. My father, myself, and my friend, and hunting mentor, Frank. Frank was the best hunter and woodsman I've ever, even until today, known. He was part Native American and had a sixth sense about nature, unlike anyone else I have known. We were hunting about one and a half miles from any road. The basin was flooded, and we were hunting in water from six inches to four feet deep. Frank killed a nice little four-point buck. My dad and I went to meet him just about 300 yards away. It was decided that Dad would take the guns and go on out the woods to the truck and wait for me and Frank to float the buck out, which is easier than dragging or pulling a deer out. But to do so, we would have to travel through woods on a different route than Dad and would take us a little longer. As we were floating the deer out, I realized that something was paralleling us on the left of us, about 30 yards away in the thick cypress trees. We were alone except for Dad, who was by now at least five or 600 yards ahead of us. We had a pole cut about six feet long with a rope tied in the middle and each of us having the pole across our waist. We were walking side by side. I stopped when I heard the footsteps and looked behind us off to the left. Saw nothing. When I turned around, Frank was looking at me with an amused look. I asked him, do you hear that? He smiled and said yes and started walking again. The walking off to the left started again. I stopped again. But when I turned around... I caught a glimpse of something black go behind a tree. Problem was, the black thing was up in the tree, not at the water level. I saw water rippling in the swamp, but the black movement was too high to be in the water, I thought. Frank told me, let's go, don't worry about him. This confused me. Frank knew him? This time, instead of walking facing the direction we were walking, I turned and walked looking back at which time I saw a tall black figure passing between the trees. At this time, I started really putting an effort into pulling the buck out. Frank just chuckled and told me that I did not have to worry. Let's just get to the truck. The splashing sound of walking followed on the side of us another 15 to 20 minutes until we arrived at the truck. We loaded the deer, and I turned to tell my dad what had happened, and Frank put his hand on my shoulder, looked me in the eyes, and just barely shook his head no. I did not speak of it that day, or any day, for years, then telling the story only once to some younger hunters who just laughed and gave me the you're full of shit look. I have not spoken again of it until this email. Once you have an experience such as this, the woods are never the same. Years later, maybe 20 or so, I had stayed on my deer stand until dark 30 in the same general area. That night, I heard three distinctive loud knocks. I said to myself at that time, Damn, I wish I had not heard that, but I had. I left carefully and alertly and went back to my little camp about two miles away. I had a bourbon and said, This is for you, Frank, as it reminded me of Frank and our time together. But I was not as afraid as the first time, but very aware. Hello. I live in northeast Tennessee. I live where Tennessee, Kentucky, and Virginia all meet. I'm five minutes from Virginia and about five minutes from Kentucky. Where I live is very mountainous and rugged, with several cliffs, deep hollows, and many miles of untouched forest. I grew up hunting and fishing and competition coon hunting with hounds for years. I've hunted all over the U.S. and have never seen one of these creatures, Bigfoot. However, I have recently found footprints and I have heard what I am almost certain was one of those devils. About a year ago, I was attending a little get-together at a friend's place. While talking with several of my friends, a couple of ladies walked in that I didn't know. My friend introduced us, and we all started talking again, but now with a couple of real nice elderly ladies. I'm kind of a talkative person, and I can usually carry on a conversation with anyone. So out of the blue, I asked, has anybody ever seen a Bigfoot? And as quick as I did, one of the ladies said, yes, I've seen one of those bastards. It scared the crap out of me. I said, really? Tell me about it. She told me that she lives alone way back in the mountains and in a single wide mobile home. And on that one night, while watching television, 
there was a loud, hard bang on the outside of her trailer. She had her curtains open because she lives miles from anyone and on a dead-end gravel road. She thought it was some young teens just being assholes and trying to scare her. So she hollered and said, Stop! I have a shotgun and I'll use it if you don't knock it off. In just another few minutes, bam, it happened again. So she grabbed her shotgun and started toward the door. And that's when all hell broke loose. Bang, bang, thump, and extremely loud guttural growls that she had never heard before. Needless to say, my friend was shaken up pretty badly, and the only thing she knew to do was to turn out the lights. Strangely, this is when everything stopped. She knew that whatever had done this was not human, because when all hell broke loose, she went to turn off the lights. She could tell that her trailer had been knocked off its foundation. The next day she called the company she bought the trailer from, and they sent three men out to put it back on the foundation. After they had finished, she asked them to knock it back off the foundation, or at least see if they could move it. They couldn't budge it. After this happened, and we became more acquainted, she started telling me about other things that were happening. She said she was hearing them screaming at night. She began finding huge rocks, big twisted limbs, dead animals, and a lot of other things that you wouldn't believe. I decided to try and find her some professional help. She wouldn't because she thought if she told the authorities that they would put her in a nut house, as she called it. So I took on the task of finding someone. I contacted a very popular but very controversial person in the Bigfoot world, and he truly tried to help. But one of those things he wanted us to do was to offer them gifts. I sat down with her and discussed the plan, and in her sweet southern fashion, she said, Give them gifts? For knocking my damn trailer off its foundation? Hell no. I just laughed and said, You know what? You're right. I don't like the idea either. I eventually got a hold of Scott Carpenter, and he gave me the best advice a person could get. Out of respect for Scott, I'll keep mine in his conversation between him and me. I won't share it in a public forum for obvious reasons. These things are not to be trusted. They have hairpin tempers. I've never laid eyes on one of these devils, but I've heard them, seen their tracks, and have witnessed firsthand what they can do and what they can do when they are angry and will mess with you just to be messing with you. I was seven years old living on a dead-end road next to a gravel pit. I was out in front of my house alone when something caught my attention. I started walking across the street, I got to about the middle of the road, and looked to my left. Standing there motionless in the tree line, sky lined with his back to the gravel pit, was one of these things. It stood about eight feet tall, with shoulders about four feet wide, all black, with no noticeable neck. I was frozen, staring at it for at least a minute. I was about forty feet from it, and there was no doubt in my mind what I seen. I turned and ran to my house, went inside, and told my father there was a Bigfoot outside. He must not have believed me, because I remember him, days later, running out of the brush trying to scare me. I remember thinking to myself, he didn't believe me. We lived about a mile from the Mohawk River in upstate New York, and spent our childhood every day in the gravel pit and down by the river, with never having another encounter. Years later, I would go hiking up in the Adirondack Mountains with groups of my friends into Keene Valley. We would go off trail and camp at a pretty isolated spot in an open area with a beaver dam and a nice trout stream running through it. We woke up the following day and had planned to hike Dick's Mountain. I didn't feel good, so I decided to stay at camp instead of doing the half-day hike. After everyone left, I started feeling better, so I decided to do some trout fishing. It's a small, shallow stream, and I was fishing the bends in the stream. I would take a few casts and walk a little way to the next bend and cast again. I remember I was standing there and decided to move again when I took one step and all hell broke loose to my left. This was a violent bluff charge. No vocals, just limbs breaking. I didn't put two and two together until years later. It was a scary situation and thought I was done for when I realized it wasn't coming. It was going and it kept breaking branches until I couldn't hear it no more. Nothing else happened that trip. The other encounter was again hiking in the Adirondack Mountains. I was with a group of four guys. It was a total calm day, and we were hiking along, when out of the blue, we heard the unforgettable crack of a tree being pushed over, 
We didn't see the tree fall or what pushed the tree over, but it stopped us in our tracks. Again, I didn't put this together until years later, when hearing other stories of these things pushing trees over to scare people out of their area. My brother was solo hunting in Indian Lake in the Adirondack Mountains at a hunting cabin. He got into the hunting cabin before nightfall, planning on getting up at daybreak to hunt. As soon as it got dark out, he heard something outside the cabin making a ruckus. He said the noises kept getting closer until this damn thing was right outside the cabin, screaming. He said it sounded like a big person screaming, but what alarmed him was the duration of the scream and the fact that the windows were vibrating. He said he crouched down in the corner of the cabin with his gun loaded until daybreak. He decided to just leave and not go hunting. He also told me about a story our dad told him about being at the same cabin with his hunting buddies. They decided to hike a nearby mountain and plant an American flag on the top. The strange part of the story was the bear that was yelling at them when they got to the top of the mountain. You might be wondering why I never put two and two together with my encounters. As a young child seeing one of these things, it was such a scary encounter that I all but forgot about it, until my older brother told me about his encounter. That's when I started to look into this subject online. And that's when I seen a picture of the thing I seen as a child, and it brought the memory back to me. I have spoken to my father about going into the house and telling him there's a Bigfoot outside. He confirmed everything that I remembered was correct, and that he remembered me coming into the house telling him there was a Bigfoot outside. I didn't press him any more about the incident, because he got pretty old and didn't want to make him feel bad about blowing it off. Thanks for listening to my story. Hi, I'm a retired government worker, and this is the reason why I will not go public with my experience. I've been hunting since the age of 15, in the field of work I was in, military law enforcement. I would have been sent for a psych eval and removed from active duty if I ever spoke of this. I still do not want to be recognized for this encounter, but I feel a need to tell the story. I was a scope-sighted rifleman, so stalking a target is not new to me. I've received multiple training courses through my 34 years of service on how to cover and conceal myself. I'm multiple theaters of operations. I was in British Columbia, Chilliwack to be exact. I was told there were deer and black bears around Chilliwack Lake. So I decided to go scope the area out for signs of potential activity in the area. I passed the Chilliwack Lake camp area around three kilometers, parked my vehicle. I had my wax tire marker to mark my way in and my 12 gauge with Sabbat slugs. I walked for about four kilometers, found a good spot to sit, observe, and just enjoy the beauty of the wilderness. There were absolutely no people around. ATVs, motocross, not even birds chirping. No squirrels running in the branches. Just dead. No sounds at all, which I thought was weird. So after around 30 minutes, the environment was still dead. Nothing. Very creepy. I decided to change my location. This was when it all started to get weird. I came upon a carcass. The weird thing is, it was not mauled, bitten, or even eaten. It was completely ripped apart, in totality. I knew it wasn't recent because the blood had turned blackish. So, knowing I was in a kill site, I decided to pull back a bit and observe the general area. I'm now about 30 feet from the carcass, and the only way I can describe the smell that came over me was when a mop is left in a dirty bucket of water. I worked on farms my entire youth, and I've never smelled anything like it. I was almost dry heaving. It was just nasty. I decided to retreat back to my vehicle, following the wax tire marker trail I made on the way in. I noticed that the marks were smudged. I'm getting weirded out, and my hypervigilance is at a max now. I made it about a kilometer. There was something really heavy to my left. The ground had a slight vibration in it and I decided to put my back against a large rock and prepare for a fight. Something was stalking me. It was smart and fast, and that smell just kept following me. At this point, I charged my shotgun. After about five minutes, hearing nothing, I continued my trail out. There were noises on my flank, but not too close. When I was close to my vehicle, I made sure I was around 100 meters from my vehicle, had a short stop of around five minutes, and then I proceeded to my vehicle. A large tree was leaning or hovering over it. As you can expect, I drove out of there in a hurry. 
After about 15 kilometers, I stopped and my legs would not move. As I sat and tried to make sense of what just happened, I realized I just got chased out by something or things. There were definitely more than one. Well, I secured my shotgun and tried to drive home, realizing I could never tell anybody about this. It would ruin my career. One day, something was in the woods. It was heavy, smart, and aggressive. I knew it knew what a weapon was, and it knew I was ready to fight after I charged my shotgun. It, or they, kept their distance. I've been in the shit, life or death theater of operations, and I've never experienced anything like this. I've received training on how to understand your sixth senses, and I've become very good at listening to my gut instinct. On that day, my instinct told me I was in a very dangerous situation. How I reacted probably saved me. I'm not a Bigfoot believer, I've never seen one, but there is something in those woods, and it's not friendly. I have not been in the woods since, nor have I hunted. I have moved out of British Columbia. I've also lost a great passion of mine, hunting. I would like to remain anonymous. Nobody would respect me if I spoke with this. What the f could rip an animal apart like that, leaving no signs in the kill area, just animal parts? My name is I'm 32 years old. My number one passion is hunting big, old, smart black tails. I also archery hunt elk as well as rifle hunt predators. I was for a few short years a big game hunting guide in northern Idaho. It was the fall of 2019, after close to 25 years in the woods, I saw something in the woods that has left me stressing every time I have to hike in the dark going in or coming out of the mountains. It was rifle deer season and I was hunting a massive buck that I had seen the year previous. The only downside is that buck lives in the middle of nowhere. From my house to the beginning of the logging road is a 30-minute trip. Then it's an hour drive up the logging road to the very end of a certain drainage main line. Then it's an 8-mile bike or hike to where I want to hunt this buck. In order to get all the way up to where I want to be by daylight, I have to start my hike a couple of hours before daylight. It was on this trip up the trail that I saw something I have never seen before. The weather was rainy and drizzly as well as the thick coastal fog was rolling in and out. I had reached a point in the trail where I wanted to walk as it was a very large patch of big timber with a long flat stretch of trail that has a major game trail intersecting. I've seen animals cross at that point many times. There was enough light that I could see approximately 200 yards. I was slowly pushing my mountain bike with my left hand and holding on to my 270 with my right. As I turned my head from looking to my right, I looked straight down the trail at the point where the game trail intersects and saw a seven to eight foot tall massive stature being, black in color, walking in steady stride across the trail, looking at me the entire time. The only detail that stands out the most, more than its size, color, or even that threat level, was how long its arms were, well below the knees with a significant constant sway in motion with each step. I froze in awe and shock at what the hell I'd just seen. I didn't move for several minutes. I was by myself, but I wasn't scared of leaving. To be honest, it was like my brain couldn't really comprehend what I just saw, so I started telling myself anything to explain it away. Oh, it was just a bear. Maybe it was a real wet deer or elk. It could have been a hunter in dark clothing without orange on. I finally felt assured it was something else other than what I'd just seen and continued on. I walked up to the point where the being crossed the trail, thinking I could see a deer or bear track to explain it away. However, there were no tracks or anything. The ground was hard orange-brown clay. However, it was raining, and surely if anything on hoof or anything with claws walked there, it would have left a track. I looked and looked and found nothing as far as tracks. The sighting lasted literally seconds. However, it was long enough for me to tell there was no way in hell it was a bear elk, human, cat, or deer. I have successfully killed every forementioned species with many of each species. I have hunted, fished, camped, and worked in the woods for close to 25 years. I've seen some things in nature that most people simply would not believe it could happen, involving known species of bear, elk, deer, bobcat to be exact, but I've never seen anything like what I saw that day. The more I replay it in my mind what happened, I am convinced I saw a Bigfoot. 
I feel very awkward even typing this. I've only told three people what I saw that day. Two are my friends and hunting partners, and one is an uncle who I have looked up to and inspired me to hunt since I was a kid. All three of them literally laughed and gawked at me and told me there is no proof. No game trail videos, no bones, no bodies. So, I never brought it up with anyone since. Not even my wife or children. I have accepted what I've seen, and I'm at ease with accepting it. What I saw is what many would call Bigfoot. I know what I saw. Nobody can tell me differently. I was hunting with my walker hounds one night, and my dogs were on a scent, so I sat down on a log to wait and hear which way they were going. All of a sudden, I heard a branch break, and it was my dogs laying behind me, shaking. I thought, what the hell? My dogs would fight a bear. Then I heard voices. I'm five miles from the nearest house, on a moonlit night at 2 a.m. I had no flashlight on, I was just sitting there. Next thing, I saw four of these things. Two males, 10 to 12 feet tall, one female, 8 feet tall, and the child, about 5 to 6 feet tall. The young one was walking in front of the three that were walking side by side. They got about 30 feet from me, and the tallest one stopped, lifted its head, and took a big sniff of air, and they all stopped and pinned me. I was so scared I was going to die that night. The largest one took one step towards me, and the one next to the female grabbed its shoulder and spoke in its ear and said something to it. I think it saw my rifle. Then they veered off into the bush. I do believe it was my gun that saved my life. Otherwise, I think I would be dead now because I got the drop on them. I have had several encounters in Washington State hunting. One in Oregon bass fishing. A huge rock was thrown at my boat off a cliff right before dark and one time in Idaho bass fishing at night, where there were two of them calling to each other from each side of the lake. Last year, my son and I were hunting over in Orville at my brother's property along the Canadian border. I put apples in the tree about 10 feet high. I set up a trail cam the night before opening day of deer season. The next morning, they were gone. I was looking up the tree, and my son says, What's this? A circle of two feet around, one inch wide of deer hair freaked us out. No pictures on the camera, and both our cell phones were dead. This is all true. Thanks, Rick. Hi. Please don't use my name, as my employment may be affected. It was in the late 1970s I was working as a bodyguard for a very influential man. We were on a business trip to the States. We had a couple of days off between meetings. The person that we were staying with had arranged for us to go out into the high country with the First Nations guide to see the wildlife. It's so different from the stuff we have here in the UK. All went well. We drove so far up and walked about a mile to this mountain meadow. I, being the bodyguard, had been given a 12-gauge shotgun with slugs just in case a bear or the like got too friendly. We were standing in the woodland right on the edge of a meadow. The wildlife was out and about doing their own thing truly stunning to see and listen to. Neither my boss or I had cameras. Just being there was magical. Our First Nations guide, a really nice and very knowledgeable man, was telling us what each thing was and what it ate. When suddenly he just went silent and his eyes wandered into the distance. We both followed his gaze and saw what he was looking at. It was about seven and a half feet tall, slight stooped shoulders, and had gray-brown hair all over going into silver on the head and shoulders. I immediately slid the gun off my shoulder and went to raise it when our guide said in a quiet voice, Don't. Put it down. So I lowered it, but kept it ready. By this time, it made my pooper pucker. My boss just stood transfixed, never a sound or movement out of him. By this time, it was only a hundred feet away from us. When it looked around and saw us there, it stopped and stared at us. The guide stepped forward two paces and raised his hand and spoke to it in his native language. It just looked at him and then walked away across the meadow and into the high timber. Our guide then told us that this was an elder and we were in no danger and to please not tell anyone what we had witnessed or where we were. Thank you. 
When I was 10 years old, I had gone trapping with my grandfather on the Groundhog River in northern Ontario. He had built a couple of cabins along the river to serve as stopovers as he made his rounds. We arrived at the cabin which was deepest in the bush, only to find our cabin completely ransacked by what we, at least I thought, not having heard of Sasquatch at this time, were bears. For years I put off the strange things I saw that day as merely the incredible abilities of a hungry and curious bear. But today, armed with the knowledge of Sasquatch in retrospect, it could have only been a Sasquatch. I should have guessed by the puzzled look and awkward silence from my grandfather that this was no ordinary bear b &E. The door had been ripped off and was found in a clearing a couple of hundred yards down the trail. The wood stove, a cook stove that took three men to move, was found 500 feet up the trail. What was even stranger is that there were no drag marks between where it originally sat and the clearing where it was found. Every jar lid, every container, every box had been opened. A case of wooden matches with 20 smaller boxes in it had been opened, and every little box also had been opened. The two cot beds were never found, mattresses and all. Fortunately, the bunks had been left intact. One of the windows had a loose steel mesh over it, with the squares being approximately an inch. It looked as if someone had put its hand or paw in it and squeezed all the metal to the center. The list goes on, things a bear could never do, but I was too young to realize. I never thought to look for tracks, but I'm certain my grandfather did, being a master woodsman, which is probably why he did not mention it. That was the last year my grandfather had trapped, often wondering if it was because of that encounter or simple old age. Another interesting story. In 1994, I was working in a healing center in Australia where they often had shamans and psychics come in to do presentations, etc. A woman psychic had come in, and as part of her presentation, she had asked a couple of the staff to put some pictures in unmarked envelopes so she could guess what they were. As one of the pictures, I put a sketch of a Bigfoot. That evening, as she successfully guessed her way through the envelope, she came to mine. Immediately, her face went completely deadpan, dropping the envelope on the floor, and she said in a terrified voice, Someone must stop these beings. They are working with the ETs and disappearing people. She was very upset and refused to touch that envelope again. Sure enough, it was my Bigfoot pick. Make of that what you may. Dan My experience with these things happened when I was 13, and I'm now 37, and still remember that moment. I'm an avid hunter and have had that passion since I was born. Luckily got the guts to share my story, and I'll believe it till the day I die. Long story short, I was at a scout camp campout, and it was after dark, and I walked to the cabin where my brother was. The cabin had a big glass pane window with the light on. As I was walking toward the light of the window of the cabin, two massive beings stepped out of the trees onto the two-track road with trees on both sides of the two tracks. I immediately crouched down so I could get a better look. Let me remind you that they were 20 feet in front of me. The light of the window between them and me really made their figures stand out. They were massive. One was, I'd guess, nine feet tall, and the other around seven feet tall. The smaller one was at the biggest one's shoulder height. As I was crouched, they kept walking toward me. I called out my brother's name, thinking it may be him. They stopped when I said his name and turned into the trees and disappeared. They walked next to a power line pole and into those trees. When they disappeared, I turned tail and ran back as fast as I could to the other cabin and was silent the rest of the camp trip. I just told everyone I was sick. I still deal with what I saw. Nobody but my family believes what I saw. Seeing two is rare from what I heard, maybe not. To deal with going back into the woods where these beings live, I took a stress management class in college, and our final exam was to face a fear and go face it, and write about it for the final exam. So I went to the same spot and spent the night alone. I never said in the exam what I saw, just that I was afraid of being alone in the dark. What I saw, I saw, and facing that fear when I slept alone years later helped me deal with my passion of hunting and still going outdoors alone or with friends. Maybe telling that will help others feel that they can go back and enjoy their passion outdoors. 
Don't get me wrong, I still have a hard time going hunting and camping alone, but I still do. The two beings I saw, I know were not human, without a doubt. I know they were Sasquatch. Hopefully my story can reach others who have experienced these massive, intriguing beings. Stay safe. Thanks, Justin. I'm from Maine, and I grew up in a hunting family. My father is a master Maine guide, and my grandfather is a professional Maine guide. I've been in the woods ever since I can remember, following my father around, learning as much as I can. I've hunted and successfully harvested all of the large game animals in the state, as well as numerous species of small game. So I know what is what when I'm in the woods, and I know enough to know how animals act towards humans. In the fall of 2014, I was in a family's cabin on the pond about 20 miles outside of the town we live in. It's pretty remote, being the road into the cabin is gated off and it's a mile drive in. There are four cabins on this pond and they are all owned by my family. These cabins have been in my family since the 1920s. My great-grandfather ran a hunting and fishing outfit out of these cabins. My mother, father, wife, and I were at the cabin relaxing and just enjoying the peace and quiet. Me being me and being kind of intrigued about the whole Bigfoot subject, decided to joke around and take two pieces of firewood and make two knocking sounds with them around 8.30. By maybe 9 o'clock, my father was already asleep. So it was just my mum, my wife, and me awake. My wife and mum had decided to go outside to use the outhouse, but once they stepped outside of the cabin onto the porch, they instantly heard two knocks in the woods. Needless to say, they didn't walk all the way to the outhouse and just decided to pee right beside the porch. They came into the cabin and told me what they had heard. I didn't believe them, so I went out and I just stood on the porch. My mum joined me, and we heard walking right directly in the woods, not 20 yards from us. I had a very bright spotlight and shined it in the woods, and nothing. Turned the light off and instantly heard the walking again. Then we heard deep breathing, something with lung capacity, unlike any human. We rushed inside and told my wife what had just happened. None of us really knew what was out there, but we had an idea. We were not inside for long, then bam, something hit the side of the cabin. The cabin is set maybe eight feet from the wood line. I had enough, grabbed my shotgun loaded with slug and went and stood on the porch. I was greeted with a high-pitched but deep scream, 20 yards in the wood line, and it was unlike anything I've ever heard. It did that four times, then went back to making the breathing noises. I went inside and my mum shut the curtains and we sat around the table for a few hours. Nothing else happened to the cabin that night. I still feel very uneasy going in there, and my wife won't stay in there overnight unless we stay in the cabin. We've told a few people in the family, and none of them believe us as to what happened. Thanks for listening. Caleb.